Now we're going to deal with it, it's going to be front muscle, but this is just the flail mode off like tomorrow. Um, I'm then going to have to try and incorporate it in, which will mean power harrow, try and mix a bit of soil with it, and then plow it in. This is going to be quite difficult to get rid of. I mean, the other alternative would be just to mow it off and leave it for a couple of weeks on the surface, turn it into hay, by which time it would take less bulk, and then try and turn that in. I've never worked out which is best, but I'm potentially I lose a fair bit of probably nitrogen if I leave it to dry too much. Well, you'll get some volatilization. <coughs> um, so. I think you'll, you're going to do will do less for helping the soil biology oh. if it's dry. I mean, if, it's if, dry, if, yeah. if, it, if, it, if you incorporate it when it's moist yeah. and it gets worked on quickly, That's what I, I think the soil biology do. will benefit. <coughs> yeah. I, I mean, can you, can, you, can you disc this? You could chop it and then disc I it? Could, I can flail it to, to within an inch of its life. You yeah. know, so be, you flail it and but there'll be that much material on the ground. But then if you yeah. disc it. Yeah, that's what I have Because then you're beginning to start that sort yeah. of incorporation just in that top sort of yeah. two three inches. And that's why I use the power harrow, simply because I don't well, have power harrow would be fine. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot well, of... It's very hard for power harrowing. It's dry, you know. I mean, I may have to water this. Oh. I mean, if we're in the situation we are now where it gets really dry, this ground does get really dry, I would have to water this to be able to incorporate it. Mm. If it's that dry, the plough's not going to go in anyway. Yeah. But I will have to plough this in to get rid of it. I mean, if I had more time, if I had maybe six or eight weeks, I could just continue cultivating the time, spring time. It will eventually break down. But I don't have that much time. We're going to be planting some brassicas here in, in about five weeks. It doesn't give me a lot of time. I need to start getting rid of this now. This is going to be quite a challenge. Um, this is why, you know, somebody might say, well, get some sheep in. We <laughs> <laughs> get lost in here. <laughs> well, you should have seen this four weeks ago. I mean, it was up to me almost four weeks ago. I mean, I don't know why this stuff grows so well here. It loves this type, this right, it really does. Um, I never quite managed to work out the difference between tetraploid and diploid. And well, that's a rye grass, isn't it? It's a tetraploid it's rye a tetraploid, grass. And it's, yeah. not, it's not rye, as in grazing rye. No, it's no, it's rye. not. No. Tell me, what do you think about vetch? Because I've never had the success. I've never felt that it fixes as much nitrogen and, and produces yeah. the crop yield afterwards that people claim well, that it should do. Well, I've, I've had my doubts about it, although I did one year have a fantastic crop, and as I turned it in, you could literally see all the, all the, right, all the um, nodules on the roots. It looked mm -hmm. just like someone had been out of a bag of chemical fertilizer and <laughs> spread it around, you know. It really did. Um, <laughs> And we did get a fantastic crop of grass for afterwards, so I think sometimes it works, but uh, I've never really felt right, um, vetch established that well. No, I'm it takes ages to get going. Yeah. Um, you know, even where we've grown them sort of for harvest and taken them for seed and then had a crop afterwards, it doesn't seem that they've gone. Let's drop. So you can see the structure here is not as good as it was in the other one. Mm -hmm. We are quite near the headland actually. <laughs> uh, you, yeah, there's some. There's, yeah. there, there's uh, I mean, the soil's still quite cold actually. Look, look at this. Yeah. If that's not nitrogen, I don't know what it is. Look. Yeah. But, I mean, it's been. I think it's been later this year because of the low temperatures. I mean, we've still got quite low soil temperature actually. It's, it's, it's huge. <laughs> This is huge, freshly grown. Huge really. population of nodules. I mean, just that's what I would incredibly high like to see. Yeah. Well, I, mean, that's, that, I, would say well, I wouldn't say it's always like that. That's unusual to see that. Is it really? Yeah. Congratulations on your nodules. Well, yeah, I've got good <laughs> nodules. <yeah. laughs> and they're pink. <laughs> <laughs> got a nice pair of pink nodules here. <laughs> but this stuff doesn't do a lot for soil structure, you know. The roots are too fine. I mean, you can see, you know, underneath, it's yeah. still quite, I know we are on the clay is starting to... Yeah, I mean, it'd be better off going that way. Is this likely Lucerne better, better... Well, Lucerne wouldn't be any good for yeah, just over winter. Yeah, yeah. Mustard, because we have a lot of brassicas anyway. I'll tell you something else, we have another thing going on with mustard, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But we are using mustard for another purpose, which is fire fumigation. But, I mean, the beauty of this is it will grow quite well in the spring and it means we can get rid of it quite early right. and still get some nitrogen benefit because the brassica here are going to take quite a lot to grow and we do I mean basically it's all about managing end really. Mm. 
Yeah. So it does got a lot here. Now whether we're going to get more end on this bit here, we yeah, can get over there. Well, I think that's the possibility because that lot's going to take ages to break down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah but you might get yeah. you might get more end mm, fixed. But the question is, are you going to make more use of the end yeah, over there because good, you've got this yeah. high carbon in there that's, that's and these high lignin yeah. and polyphenol yeah. legumes? <clears throat> yeah. Will you have better structure here or not? Probably, yeah. Why didn't we have a big one? I mean, this rye is great for great for sauce <laughs> prep, actually. <laughs> don't get lost. In it. <laughs> it, does, it does produce wonderful fruit. Yeah. 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 Much better than best. This never been cut. Uh, hasn't been cut. Yeah. This was sown in September last yeah, year. Yeah. I mean, yeah. really, yeah. with hindsight, yeah. I should have cut it about a month ago. You should have had oh, yeah. juice on it all. Day. Yeah, I'd eat all my trees. Are you going to talk about the trees? Why have you put the rye in anyway? Well, just to provide a bit of um, right. root structure as much as anything. And because I know that rye always works. It never, it never fails. Whereas that may not always work very well. You can lose it in the winter if it gets very cold. Pigeons can do a lot of damage. Yeah. Pigeons never eat the rye, so the rye grows too fast. See, this is getting quite stemmy now. I mean, yeah. I'm really going to have to get rid of this pretty soon. It's going to turn to straw, isn't it? If you, if you can get it mixed in with some soil, it will rot, I think yeah. it'll rot much quicker. Yeah. I mean, this is pure, you know, pure nitrogen, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Uh, well, not too close to winter. I let it grow before winter. It'll get cut maybe early September. And I'll let it grow before winter. Right. I must say, I think this might be the best rye crop I've ever grown. It's very healthy. more like Westerwald, isn't it? Yeah. I yeah. think it is a Western, yeah. it is a Western world, you're right. It is, it is. Oh, right. It's a world, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. The name oh. rings a bell now. Yeah. That was a mistake you made, that yeah. <laughs> It was it is Western world, yeah. yeah. It was cheap. Yeah, it was cheap. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's cheap for us, you know, it works about £30 an acre yeah, yeah. or something, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's Western world. Well, there's just no, virtually no nodules, of course. Yeah. So there's nothing like the nitrogen fixing going on. Is that because of the rye? Yeah, I think the rye is just completely it's dominated. Dominated the uh, God, bloody dry, isn't it? The clovers. Yeah, I mean, but you can see that the, the improved soil structure. Yeah, it's here. still a nice structure. Isn't yeah, it? it's better than vetch only, which is you know one of the reasons why having more than one species is always good. It does have a nice structure. It's very. How dry. many of these you... different legumes need to be inoculated? Because they don't all. No, the only one I've ever inoculated is the lucerne. But I've been right it's around the whole lucerne, farm now, so I don't bother anymore. But lucerne. Uh, oh, so I once think, you've had it in there, that's, yeah, that's, that's I okay. think there's a question mark right, over sand point, isn't there, Mark? You're supposed keep to keep it up, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Even with gaps. Yeah. 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 The sand fine <coughs> needs inoculating, but uh, part we did do some work on the because there are companies selling inoculants for white clover and red clover, mm. and um, our conclusion is that generally it's not necessary. Right. The only situation where I might consider it would be. Converting a very intensive variable farm yeah, where, where, you, where the chemicals. biology might be very low. Right, but I, yeah. I wouldn't bother. Hmm. What it's about seed dressing? Because yeah. we put microbes of fungi in all our grass. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've I've heard of people doing it, but actually, I've never never done it. I've never sort of had had yeah. any evidence to support it. So, um, you doing that with a compost tea? No, with a powder. It's a stuff with called Bio Root. Mike Harrington sells it. Right. It's like a microbes of fungi that you. Or you chuck it in the drill, but you can get the seed dressed with it if you you quick enough water and see which one around. So um, I don't know. I mean, there there might be a case for doing it if you think because of past treatment of agrochemical effects. Sort of but I wouldn't. But once once you've got it there and inoculated, I don't think you'd need to keep doing it. Well, no, it lasts for the life of the crop. It doesn't last for five or five. Well, I suspect once it's in the soil, it'll persist mm, anyway. Yes. Well, how long will the lucerne one persist for between crops? Um, I don't think I've ever seen, but I mean, as the, the rotation on lucerne is reckoned to be five or six years gap at least, yeah. and, they, in, and the, then you don't need to inoculate even right, after five okay. or six year gap. Yeah, so right. I think you're probably fine. <coughs> in that gap between lucerne, could you grow red clover, or is that too close to? Um, 
Yeah, but it's well, five years later, like, could you put loose on the regular um, same rotation? Hmm. Well, I do think we have that kind of loose on going together. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just thinking that like, we grow loose on, and then you, like, you go with COVID, you've got to leave it three or four years, yeah. it? But could you sneak a looser in as well in that same rotation? Well, you're right to ask the question, and there is a, there is a definitive answer, and I'm not absolutely sure what it is. I can't, just can't. Well, the eel worm is different. It's a different, different species of mm. eel. Yeah, it's a well, in that case, in that case, fruit, isn't it? in that case, it'll be fine. <clears throat> the question, the, the interesting thing for me is, what, and when we're growing these mixtures, you know, we're advocating putting in three or four different legumes. The question is, do we suffer the same risk of building up disease by mm. having rather short gaps between very diverse mixtures? Mm. Um, I'm sure that if you're growing. 100% lucerne or 100% red clover, then the risk of getting a disease problem building up is very great. Mm. But it's maybe that with a diverse mix, the risk is very low and we can operate and quite you're, short You're rotations. increasing biological activity, yeah. which yeah. Is, should be protecting against well, disease. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I just wish for thinking, you know? No, I th <laughs> but, well, I think... We've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> I think it's a reasonable... <laughs> Except if you mix layers, got lucerne, red clover, yep. white clover yep. and you know you've got a, a, a cash crop in between mm -hmm. you know you've got an arable lane or something but then you're going to go back to that yes. mix yes, so you're you going to well. put the lucerne, the red clover yes. and the white clover all back, back in back again back within two or three years yes mm -hmm. the question is is, that, is it going to be a problem or isn't it we, well, don't, we don't really know um, but it's possible that it won't be a problem. But aren't a lot of diseases a symptom of poor soil anyway? Yeah. Well, there's like, poor soil yeah. management and, 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 and monocropping. If you have <laughs> a decent soil, you're not going to get the problem. Yeah, and part of what you know, I said earlier on was that you know, it's about diversity. And if we can, we can reduce the risk of these problems arising, and I think we may well find that we can operate without the long gaps between yeah. crops. I mean, there are you know, many well, examples across the world of monocrop, natural monocrop systems. Yeah. Yeah. Just one species that's been never found for years. Yeah. There is not she says she has farmers in the, in the states growing continuous crops. So you can continuous as long as your soil is healthy. Yeah. Continuous yeah. plants are healthy. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of this really lush green stuff. You know, this is coming from the residue of the green eighteen months ago. This is not just coming from a little bit of vegetable along the side of it. It's no. not possible. So this is really, for yes. example, mopping up all the nutrients you're, left over from the spud crop. You're saving your nitrogen. Recycling the nitrogen. We're keeping it. Should we move on to? Well, we're quitting the.